I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. We really wanted to make sure that Hayden Christensen's performance came through from the day. So we had that very fragile, intimate scene there. But then in the meantime, we also had the voice of James Earl Jones to come through. And so we tried a really nice blend of those two moments. And we, we found the great moments where we could end, you know, start the sentence with Hayden, but end it with James. And we really tried to make the cracked mask sound scary, like it was starting to malfunction to the point of where his body is not going to be able to function anymore. And so Obi-Wan's effectively leaving him for dead again on this planet. I'm Bonnie Wilde, and I'm one of the re-recording mixers on Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm Matthew Wood. I'm the supervising sound editor on the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. One of the things that we have here at Skywalker Sound is the legacy of working with George Lucas. He really had us be involved in the project from a very early time. So we knew that there was going to be confrontations between two legacy characters. We want to make sure we honor what's come before us, you know, and the legacy of Ben Burt and what he's created here at Skywalker Sound and everyone is very respectful of that material. So when you hear these things, it's kind of like the subconscious, you know, glue that holds Star Wars together is the sound and the music. And we also had John Williams involved to do a couple of the cues for Obi-Wan, which was fantastic to have that through line as well. The exciting thing about the sounds of Star Wars, it's always about the blend and the balance. It's almost with every action sequence, it's considering who has the upper hand in each moment. We always have to update it for the soundstage of today for Disney Plus to have you know the, an Atmos track and that's uh, Bonnie and the mix crew put that together so we take our legacy sounds and any new design that's been made by John and things that um, you know you'll have a, an instance where something we might have touched on before like Vader having troubled breathing we did in Return of the Jedi but certainly this particular show has a whole different set of colors to fill in there for that particular moment so that's everyone working together with uh, design editorial and mix to make that updated for this Atmos experience. Anakin's gone. I'm what remains. We did leave an extra set of time just to work on this one scene because it's a moment where, you know, you're seeing the face of Hayden Christensen through the mask for the first time, other than when it was put on in Revenge of the Sith. No! And then that battle between friends that we finally get to see from that the prequel era of when we saw them as friends and then we see Anakin left on the side of a lava flow and that's the last time Obi-Wan sees him. So this was a moment for them to have some humanity. We really wanted to make sure that Hayden Christensen's performance came through from the day. So we had that very fragile, intimate scene there. But then in the meantime, we also had the voice of James Earl Jones to come through. And so we tried a really nice blend of those two moments. And we found the great moments where we could start the sentence with Hayden but end it with James. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. The mask which keeps him alive is broken, so his health is failing at the same time, but he's driven by anger. We really tried to make the cracked mask sound scary, like it was starting to malfunction to the point of where his body is not going to be able to function anymore, and so Obi-Wan's effectively leaving him for dead again on this planet. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. And Scott Lewis, the re-recording mixer, did all the blending there, which was just amazing. And I Hayden, I know personally, so after I saw him after we'd aired it and he was very happy to hear that like his performance was there, we wanted to preserve that humanity and that was something that was done in the mix. So we just really set aside this moment to be very special and reverent to these two, you know, legacy amazing characters and let their drama come through at the same time as all the fun sound effects and the amazing music that John Williams had made there to all come through. And that was the job of the mixer, which was fantastic there. <laughs> We wanted to feel, you know, Obi-Wan when he gets buried by rocks there. We wanted to feel his shutdown and then his resurgence. And that a lot of that was sort of mapped out 
by uh, Kelly Dixon and Josh Earl in the picture department uh, coming up with a moment where we're almost hearing flashbacks that are happening inside Obi-Wan's head. And we had a lot of material there to work with, legacy material, and we just wanted to showcase the right moments that that show his acceleration into I'm, I'm going to bust out of here and continue. You know, and you see Obi-Wan do some things that we've never seen before as far as his strengths are concerned. He's picking up giant rocks and spinning them around and all that. So that's just the dynamics of that mix and balancing that to feature those moments. Scott had, you know, particular ideas of, you know, the, the rock sounds. And so there's trial and error. So like John Borland, the designer, and Mike Levine, who's one of the sound effects editors, were trying out different rock sounds. And, you know, some of that is legacy and some of that's new design and just things like that. Because when you get the music as well, it's figuring out what is going to work as well. You discover new challenges when you're putting it all together. Star Wars is always fun. We do love working on Star Wars. <laughs> uh, Bonnie We're and I. We're just finishing yeah. working on more Star Wars. We literally it's a sad finished. Day. Yeah, we, it's we, a sad day today. We, we're finishing right now today, working on the, the next uh, Ahsoka series. So. It's a lovely place out here at Skywalker Sound, and we're still out here at Skywalker where George Lucas's Skywalker Ranch is. It's yeah. a big toy box, and then you cry sometimes because you're happy about it. 